Hi, Ann Kornick from Paint and Porcelain, and I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting. And if you've been painting a while, I hope you'll join us. Um, I think you'll find that the subject matter we have for this, the reindeer, uh, will challenge everybody, but it's not that difficult. If you're a beginner, you should try this. I've broken it down so that you can do it in simple, simple sections, and you do have um, the line drawing. This is what we're working on. Okay, this is what we're going to be working on. And it's my reindeer. And as you can see, the reindeer's in the front. And then the background is just wet grounding, which is very simple to do. And uh, doesn't require that you spend a lot of time trying to get it just right. The first thing I wanted to talk about is how you go about doing this. Now, I have here... Um, a tile that I'm doing and you can see I only I don't do all the legs because they're going to be kind of in the background and kind of misty and um, I also um, don't have any background on here because what we're going to do later is resist this animal and then put the background on so it'll make it um, a lot easier for you uh, you can get and I'm going to put the link right here you can get a free line drawing download it. So all you do is you go to the link that's there to my site. You can, uh, it'll take you right to the free download. You'll get a line drawing and you, it will be a file. You go through the purchase process. It will be a file that's free, won't be charged. It'll download to you and then you can save it and you can open it up and print it out. You can put it on a plate. Um, you can leave off part of the deer and put it on a mug. Uh, so there are a lot of different things you can do with this. And then I took and I used um, what we call Sorrel transfer paper. That's what it looks like. You can get this transfer paper online um, at Amazon, I'm sure. But you could also get it at Dick Blick. And um, DickBlick.com has this. What you want is the red. It comes in blue, white, yellow, and graphite. Don't get the graphite because it's really, really, really... Um, powdery and it comes off on everything one side is light one side is darker the darker side goes on the china and then you put this side up and then you put your tracing on top of that and you work from that so that's how this works okay just so you know um, and once you trace it with the red um, in the case of this particular deer I found that um, it kind of ran off at the top. So I, um, you know, faked with my red uh, Sharpie. This is my red Sharpie. Sharpies will not uh, come off while you're painting them, but they will when you fire. So that's a nice thing to have. And I would say go with a red, blue, or black. Uh, the black is a, a kind of sometimes a little bit too strong. And I found the red, for me, I think I like uh, real well. But I do use black from time to time. The next time for this piece, um, two things that you should have if you can get them in time. Resist. I don't usually use resist. I'm not a big fan of resist. But in this case, I think you need it because the antlers are so fine. That's one of the few times I use it. And I'm going to do wet grounding. And if you put resist on, and this is what resist is, it's a, um, it's a red jelly. Uh, kind of thing and I've been told and let's see if that's true that you should oh look it's still running and I bought this in the summer um, you should take and close your resist uh, put plastic wrap over it seal it and store it upside down and it will never turn gucky on you if it does like this one did then what you need to do is take a couple of drops of water and stir them into it and put it in the microwave and and then stir it again and just put it in the microwave for a couple of seconds. Don't do it too long. And just keep doing that until you get it the consistency you want. Otherwise, it becomes jello. <laughs> okay, so that's why I don't usually use resist. But if you store it properly upside down with the plastic wrap on it, um, then um, it will keep. And um, you should probably get it for this project because, as you can see on my deer here, I really wanted the antlers to be white and really show up well. 
And so I had to very carefully um, put the, the resist on there. All right. The other thing you will need is the sports wrap because we're going to do, um, once we resist it all and let it dry, and I would want you to do that before we start, but I might do a little quickie to show you how to do it um, because we've never used resist. Um, then you want your sports wrap. Now, sports wrap is, it's a spongy kind of thing like this. If you have it, great. If you don't, you can use just, um, probably just uh, one of the, I have a wedge sponge that I fold so that I have the rounded edge of it to use. And then I put it inside of this and wrap this up and then I, I um, do my wet grounding. Um, the name of the uh, sports wrap is MW, so M wrap, and this is sports care. And I imagine you can get stuff like this online. Um, it says, uh, helps protect skin and tape. Um, it's easy to apply. And there's uh, Mueller's Sports Med right there. Mueller'sSportsMed.com. So you can look there if you want. Maybe you'll find out a little more about it. Um, but that's what we'll use. Now, I do have MX-54. We could use that. But not everybody has that. So you can also use the sugar water method. For You can also use Copaiba. Uh, you can also use a drying um, uh, oil of some kind. But you're going to want to let that completely dry before you fire it. So... That's for next time. I know it's a lot of homework, but uh, I just wanted to make sure we got that out of the way. And I'm going to start from the top down. I found that that worked better for me because I want to keep a lot of this white. And in order to keep it white, I have to be very, very careful in how I apply my colors. So um, I'm going to start by applying them with um, my pointer. I really like this pointer. It's a pointer from... Um, it's a, let's see here. It's a Dresden brush from Jane Houston. It's a number two and it's a pointer. And it's, it's really beautiful because it takes the color really well. Now the color that I'm going to use on him right now is probably um, almost like a warm brown gray. Let me show you my, my palette because it's clean for a change. This is warm brown gray up here at the top. Let me see if I can can get it in there this right here that is warm brown gray I'm going to use that I'm going to use a little bit of celestial or my baby blue I don't have baby blue on here right now so we'll use this in place of that um, but I would use baby blue most of the time I'm also going to be using um, maybe a little bit of um, uh, some of the browns I have an auburn here I'm going to use a little bit of pecan. You don't have to use these colors. Just use whatever you feel works the best for you. And um, whatever gets it close to uh, the picture that I've posted so that you get an idea. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of yellow brown. I know I have yellow brown. And I'm just going to start up in here and just gently pull from the bottom. Oops, I need a little more oil on there. I'm gent gently going to pull from the bottom up. I don't want to get too much color on there. And I don't want to get... Here we go. I'm going to take a yellow-brown number two. I want a little more of the color in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to pull a little bit up there and a little bit up here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of warm brown gray. And just go along the side of this here. And the side of this here. I'm casting a shadow, basically. That's all I'm doing is putting the shadows on the antlers up there at the top. Now, what I'm going to tell you, and you'll be surprised, is that as I do this, this is yellow, uh, warm brown gray again. And I'm... I'm Trying to thin it out near the bottom, but I will also use a dry brush. I have another of the same brush that's dry to kind of help me do that. And I also have, oops, 
I also have here my Pico Pay. It's important that you keep this color as thin as possible up near the top of the antlers because we want those to be white. And so I'm wiping that out. Okay, now I'm going to clean my brush and I'm coming back and I'm going to start down in through here. Got a very light black and I'm just going to put it along the front of this antler here. It's almost a gray and I want to feather it so that it's a little bit thicker at the base here than it is at the top. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing over here. We're going to do it on the bottom part. So the sun, the light, is coming from kind of right in front of him. So we want to do the dark. Let me get my black a little better here. We want to do the dark a little bit more here. And I'm going to fill in a little more. I just keep using my brush going down, 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 down like this. Eventually, I'm going to put some blue over this, and that will um, make it look like a blue-black. If you don't have blue-black, that's a good way to do it. And I'm going to pull it up, but I'm going to get my really teeny tiny brush. This is a, a double, uh, a five-aught, five zeros. I'm going to put a little bit of black on it because I need just a little bit. And I'm going to pull it up this way. So I know... For beginners, you're going, oh my God, this is so much work. It's really not, but you do have to take your time. This is going to be one of those projects that's going to require you to take your time. And then you're going to take and just wipe out wherever you don't um, need the color. I'm leaving the top of these white, and that's intentional. But I am going to put white there before I'm done because I want to be able to get an idea of where I was um, once it's fired. Now I'm using my baby brush. And if you want to use a, that, that double lot, if you have that, or you have a pointer, uh, or you have a liner, sometimes it's easier to put the color on with that. I'll go back over that a little bit. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to go up in here and we're just, now the reason I'm putting the dark at the bottom is because we're casting, let me move them over and down a little bit. We're casting a shadow. The shadows are coming this way. So we're casting that shadow at the base. The light is hitting the top of the antlers are turning up. So we want the light, see it's like this. And see this part of my hand is darker and this part of my hand is lighter. So that's what you're trying to do with this. Okay, and we're doing the same thing here. And I'm going to go back to my pointer because I, I have more space to cover than I have. Uh, there, that'll work a little better than I need. So I am going to have to dip into some blue, so I'm sorry. I told you that I didn't need any blue on here, but I think I do. Now, the shadows will be at the base and on the left-hand side for the most part. Okay. I'm going to get a little more black here. Uh, I'm going to be switching back to my thin brush. You're going to go between these two brushes. Oops, hang on. I have there. And I'm going to just paint along the bottom here. Put a little more oil on. And we're doing more down here. Now I know it seems tedious. I need more black. Here we go. Um, but um, it's the best way to get the shadows on this and not lose it. I'm going to still have to go back in and very carefully um, make these thinner because I want the lines very thin. I'm not doing the very top of that. 
Okay. Cleaning that brush. Oops, come here. Okay. This is a, a smaller of these kind. This is a quarter inch. And then I'm going to take a little bit of, now if you have Copenhagen blue, that's a good color. Uh, Copenhagen is a pretty um, normal color. I think a lot of people have it. And you can add that up in here. And I'm using this br size brush because I've got a lot of territory to cover up in here. You see, I'm pulling this way across to give myself some of that uh, color where I need it. It also makes it a little smoother when you're putting color on, and a little bit back here, too. And then I'm going to put a little bit down in here, and like I said, I'm pulling... I'm pulling across just gently to get that color in there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of warm brown gray and just add it on this side. Oops, not enough warm brown gray. Here we go. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to add a little bit of Copenhagen, um, probably in here too. A little there, and maybe a little more in here. And a little over on this side. Okay, now I'm going to gently, you can always add more color next time. I'm going to gently pull out. Some of the color. I think I'm going to have to do it with some turpentine. And I want to make sure I have a line here that's white. And I want this side to be white. And I want this in here to be white. See how that just helps with the and I want right here to be white. Okay, so now I'm just taking my pointer and just sort of smoothing out some of this. Okay, those are the antlers. Now, let's say you don't get all the stuff off the background, which is fine, because next time you're going to take and you're going to put a very dark color over that, and that should eliminate any, any splashes you have on the background. We're going to start working on his face. Now, before we do that, oh, let me, let me do his eyes, because... Um, it's better to get the eyes in before you start messing with his face. It's, it's just easier. So you're going to get black on your smallest brush you've got. You're going to roll your brush so that it's as thin as possible. And you're going to start here. And you're going to go up to the top of his eye. You might have to put a little more black on. You want to keep it fairly dark. You're going to trace the bottom of his eye, too. So see, beginners, this is not difficult. And then you're going to start to fill in. Now, when you fill in, you're going to fill in that whole area there. And you're going to leave a little piece of white. Let me show you where. Right here. But if you don't leave it... <laughs> And I had something on there. If you don't leave it, you can always wipe it out. So, but you got to do it on this fire because if you if you don't, you won't get it later. It's better to leave too much white up there than not enough. You can always fill it in. It's harder to get it back. So what I do is I'm going to leave about that much white. Let me bring that up so you can see. See how much white I've left on there? I'm going to turn it around so I'm painting down towards myself. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to outline, outline. This is not difficult. But on this side, I'm going to fill in the corner, fill in the bottom here, and I'm going to look at it. It needs a little less white. So I'm going to outline this edge here. Let me do it this way. 
and that way I can fill it in a little. Now, I've left a lot of white, but that's intentional. You can always fill it in. Like I said, you can't always get it so that you can get it out. And then I'm just going through and making it a little darker black. Okay, I'm going to use the same brush. And I'm going to go up in here, and let's give them a little bit of black up in here. And a little bit of black up in here. And I'm using it up and down. I want to make it look a little furry. You know what I mean? So I'm going a little bit up and down like this. Okay. And I also want a little spot of black right in here. And I want a little bit of black right along here. Here. Okay. I'm putting the black in because it sort of defines him a little better. And then I'm coming and doing some black here. Now I'm going to do a little around his ear. His ear is rounded at the base. So right here, it's rounded like this. So that's the kind of um, stroke you're going to use, is more of a rounded stroke like that. See how I did that? And then we're going to go up around his ear. And you don't have to make it a straight line. You can make it a kind of a, a, a... Let me move it more in here. You can make it more of a broken line because the inside of his ear is very interesting. You want to make it a little bit choppy because you do want to play to that thing. Now in the center of the deer's ear, there's kind of a, a line that comes like this and then it comes straight up like this. the bottom down here again right in here we're going to put black from here to here and we're going to put it like this coming down just to that line so see i i don't think if you're a beginner that you're going to have too much trouble with this deer it already looks like a deer, doesn't it? Now I'm going to prefer to put the the leave this like this and put the blue in on the next fire because I think on the when I did it originally I tried to do them both together and I didn't get the effect I wanted on the center of the ear, so I think it'll be easier to do it if we don't have to worry about the black and we just put the black in now and then we can do the the other later. So now we're going to do this ear. It's the same principle. You're going to start and you're going to bring the black down like this. Oh, let me think the best way to do this. And you're going to start and do this. I want that a little darker. That's better. I'm using my 5 ot brush. If you don't have a 5 ot, just use a liner. What's a liner, they say? I mean, use a, a yeah, a li this, a scroller. It'll probably do the same thing. It may not be as easy to control, though, and that's the reason I go this way. Now we're going down this side. So I thought I gave you a pretty good tracing to work with so that because I think learning animals is difficult and it I think it helps to have a good tracing because then you get the idea. Okay, now I'm going to turn them upside down and I'm going to go back up this way and just even some of this out because I think it looks a little too choppy for my taste. 
Okay. And I'm going to put a little bit of black in here. And then we're going to do the center of this ear, which is like this. And then they go over this way and this way. There we go. So that's my deer and his ears and everything. His eyes and his ears. Let me just, I want this to be a little smoother right there. Okay, this is a six. Uh, for some reason, a quarter inch is just too big. I think the six will work better. So I'm going to put a little yellow brown on it. I'm going to do a full load of regular yellow brown and a side load of the um, yellow brown that's um, yellow brown number two. And I'm just going to put some color up in here. And I'm very gently just touching it. Just touching it in. Now I'm going to mess it up with the brown, with the, the black. And I'm going to make the black, I think I need to bring the black a little further down here. So that's why I did that. Take my little brush and bring it down here a little further. That's better. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take a little warm brown gray and put it along here. Okay. And I'm going to also bring the yellow brown more down this way. Do this very gingerly. If you don't cover all the space you think you need to cover, you can always cover it later. It's not like you can't. Okay, so this is what I have so far. It's going back to my black on my very fine little pointed brush and we're going to put a little bit of a little bit of a line right here. And a little bit of a line right here. Now I'm switching back to my number six. And I'm going to put a little bit of brown, yellow brown, just along here. And I'm going to put a little bit of yellow brown. Now, let me show you what I'm going to do. There's an area. Hmm. Let me take yellow brown and put it on here instead of the black. Let me get, hang on, let me show you. Okay, here's my yellow brown on here now. There's an area here that comes like this. It's the side of his nose, and I'm doing, to round it, that's what I'm doing. I'm pulling from the top, and we're going to do this, and you're just going to make C strokes. Do you see how that helps kind of round it? And then on the other side, I'm going to do a slightly um, darker yellow-brown. And I'm just going to do C strokes up this way just a little bit. And then in the middle, I'm going to take a little blue, celestial blue, and put on this side. because we want to leave that line down the middle there above his nose. And now we're going to do the nose and that will help put things in perspective for you. So I put my black back on here and I'm doing 
this very top of his nose here, it's like a oval. It's like an oval. You see how much I've done there? That's like a little oval. Now that's not his only nose, but we are going to have some We are going to have some um, shadow across the top of his nose. So I don't want to, I mean, some light. So I don't want to paint the whole thing. I just want to paint part of it. I'm going to leave a section there. And we're going to do here. His nostrils are on each side. So I am kind of curling these on each side to make it appear that he has nostrils. And then I'm going to come down and do this section down here that I have blocked out. That's the rest of his nose. Let me come down a little. That might even help a little more. Yeah, I think that helps a little more to see what I'm doing. So that's his nose there. Now I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to give him some nostrils on each side. I'm going to give him one here, which is just a... Uh, I'm doing just a half circle. There. Let's use this color right here on this side of his mouth. And then I do want more of a white. Oh, I'm going to have to clean my brush. Cleaning with turpentine and wiping it out. And I do want to put a little more white here. The color will really come in on the next fire. You'll really see the difference. I'm going to be using right now, we're going to finish out his cheek up here. I'm going to use, um, uh, I have a, a nice warm brown gray that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to come down kind of this way to a point. So there's kind of a point there. I'm going to come up this way. I want something with a little shadow to it, and that's why I'm using the warm brown gray. It's kind of a shadowy color. And then I'm going to add yellow brown with a little bit of a little bit of the darker yellow brown. Let me get the lighter yellow brown up here near the top. Okay, we're starting to give him some features now. So I'm going back with my itty bitty teeny tiny brush, taking a little of that darker brown, and we're just going to start pulling it up so that it rounds out his face. You round out the animal's face by the way that you add the color to it. And you can do it a number of ways. I like to do it this way where you just pull it up and just sort of make it look more like fur. I'm using more uh, yellow-brown, too, under his chin. Now... That's a little heavy-handed, right? So wipe off your brush really well on your towel and go back in and do it the opposite way. Start at the top and keep wiping. Do a little more. 
wipe. Do a little more, wipe. Do a little more, wipe. And just keep doing it until you get it exactly the way you want it. Now I'm going to go into black. And we're going to put in his mouth. His mouth is kind of straight across. It's a thicker mouth than a lot of animals. Um, I was surprised when I did this because I got to look at him. Otherwise, he's not going to have a straight mouth. There we go. And it curves down a little on each side. Just a little. There we go. Now with this up in here, I'm going to clean it up a little. I may have to go through and... Um, redo the nostrils because they just did not turn out quite the way I wanted them to. That's good. That's good. That's better. Okay. And then I want a little more white up here on top. When you want it to be more white and you're wiping out, use the side of your wipeout tool and it will help. I I don't want to try it with that. I want to try it with a real fine. Oh, here I got a real fine brush. This is a baby six shot. And it's dry. Okay. I just wanted to add a little there. Okay, and now I'm going to take I'm working with my sick number six. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that. Actually, I think I'm going to use pecan because I really like the pecan. I want to put a little bit of color under his chin here. That's not quite dark enough. Maybe I'll add a little auburn to it. When you want to add color, you start at the bottom and you pull up towards the top where you want the shadow to be. And in this case, then I want it to come down this way. Okay. And I get my fur brush. This is a, oh, no, wait, I'm going to use the other fur brush. There are two types of fur brushes. There's this one. Okay, this one is solid, but the bristles are more coarse. This one is a rake. And I think if I hold it down here, let me pull this up here a little better. You can see it has cutouts in it. The rake is what I really like because it really does a nice job with fur. Look at this. Okay. Alrighty. So now I'm going into my white because I want to add some white fur down here just so that I know it's there so that I don't. Now you won't be able to see it, I don't think. Can you see it? Maybe if I turn it different ways. It, it's going to be hard to see, but I've got a layer of white fur down in here and I'm putting white on it because I want to be able to see it at least when I tilt it um, when I'm doing the um, after the firing so that I know. And I'm going to add a little brown to it and pull from the outside in. I'm using the side of this brush. Mm, don't like that. That didn't turn out quite the way I wanted it to. So let me try my other fur brush. Where are you, brother? Here. Okay. And... Pull this in like that. That's better. Oh, this isn't a fur brush. It's just a regular brush. Okay. And I'm going to get a little... Yeah, but 
that's a regular brush. And this is a regular brush here. Okay. All righty. And he's going to have white fur. I take just a tad of the celestial and put it in here so I can see the fur there. And then I'm going to take the white and a little bit of celestial. And we're going to start with the fur on this side of him and bring it down. Down here is pretty quick. I'm just taking my fur brush, I'm using my auburn, and I'm gently creating fur. Same thing with this down on his leg. I'm just gonna do that down there the same way. Creating fur. Now I'll play with the fur. I'll get a little darker color. I might get a little, um, down in here, I might get a little um, darker brown. And up in here, we're gonna just put, mm, here we go, a little pecan. Go with the lighter colors now. You can always bring the darker colors in in the future. And we're going to take a little pecan down here um, and do a little down in here and on his leg. You're just blocking him in, basically. Now, you will have a darker color on the back of him, back in here. You're going to have a lighter color up in here. Oops, let me move it in. Lighter color up in here. You can almost do a, 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 a yellow if you have it. It will give me a really pretty. And then in order to mix this, back off on your, on your brush, even this kind of a brush, and just... very gently, almost like you're barely touching the back of your hand, go through and add his fur. Now, you want it darker underneath. I'm only using auburn. This is not my darkest brown. You can always add the darker colors later. You're gonna add a darker color up in front here here and here. I wanted you to see what all is involved. And then up here, you're going to there we go. Okay, now taking my fur brush, right? And I'm pulling I cleaned it out. I better put color under there. Let's put a light color under here. Then go to my turpentine, clean out the brush and pull. Whoops, got a hair in there. Don't want that. Press and pull. Now, I have my handy dandy. The 
this is a makeup sponge. And I want to create the idea that there's light coming down. So now I'm going to go through and actually pounce off a little of the color on the back to do that. And I'm going to pull out. This is white. White really can help you a lot. Okay. You're going to be doing the, the resist on the next fire. This is probably the hardest part is to get the fur the way you want it. And you need to get some of it the way you want it now. Because if you wait and wait until the very end to get it the way you want it, it will not always look the way you intend it to look. I don't like his chin here, and I don't like this part here. I can probably play with these on the next fire. So I'm just going to pull them out a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to get a brush with some turp on it. And just go around and clean up the outside. And then look at his face. Decide if you have the colors where you want them. You're going to want to use other, uh, um, look at other, on the internet, look at other suggestions of animals to see if you like what you see. I need a little black up in here. That's better. That's better. That's a little better. And finally... Always have a number of different thing tools you can use. This tool is just a, a sharpened stick. And I'm just using it to give you texture so that it look it's gonna look more like fur. I'm doing it on the first coat because it's better to do it on the first coat and then you can play with it on the second coat. Um, I would pretty much fire this as is. I would take, put a little white on my brush and just hit the tips of this so I know where they are. Just using white. You may even have to go back in next time and uh, trace it out again. But it does help to have the white up there so that you can see where you left off. There we go. So this is how this deer turned out. Now I am going to fuss with them a little bit just to make sure that everything is where I want. I think under his chin, um, I'm still having some issues. I think I might go in with a darker color or take color out. And that might be better. This is what we're going for. And this has been posted so you can use it as an example to work from. Okay? And you see up there, I really use the white quite a bit. Take a chance. Even if you're a beginner, please try this. Okay? Alrighty. Pick up those brushes. Keep painting. See you next time. Bye-bye. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again. 
and I'll see you next time.